page number 23. And we're on uh, number 17. All right, that's always the same. Number 17. Why were Adam and Eve driven out of the garden? Why were they driven out of the garden? Sin. Huh? Well, sin, but why were they driven out of the garden? The garden was paradise, wasn't it? Remember the word paradise. It comes from the, from the uh, Persian word paradise. It goes into uh, uh, Hebrew paradise, and, and it comes all the way. The word Pharisees, and, and uh, all of that comes from this word paradise. Means a guarded pleasure park. It came into Greek paradiso, and then in English. But God made a paradise, and He put Adam in that paradise, and He told him to take care of it and to guard it. Well, Adam didn't do it, but there was something. There were two very important trees in that garden that we have discussed about before. What were the two important trees? The tree of knowledge of good and evil, and that was the one they weren't supposed to have. The tree of life, and that tree of life. God did not want them to live forever in a sin-laden bodies. Just think about it yourself now. We're all sinners, aren't we? We're, most of us are saved in here. Well, maybe all of us are saved. They're in the class. But how would you like to live forever in this body? I don't want to. I, I mean... I want a better one. I want a better one. And God's going to make a better one for me, all right? He's going to make a better body for me. All right. So he drove them out of the garden to keep them from living forever in sinful bodies. That's the, that's the answer. So on number 17, to keep them from eating of the tree of life and living forever in sinful bodies. Okay. Number 18. The first child born to Adam and Eve was what? Cain. What's his name mean? Gotten. When Cain was born, Eve says, We have gotten a man, even the Lord. She thought he was the Messiah. All right? And the, the one that they thought was the Messiah killed another child. All right? And the second born was Abel. All right? Now, Abel means gotten, but what does... I mean, Cain means gotten, but what does Abel mean? Do you remember what that means? It comes from a Hebrew word. It means, uh, it means vapor or mist. Remember, the earth was, was watered by a vapor or mist at that time, wasn't it? And also, it means green pasture. Abel. What? Abel. Green pasture. That's what Abel means, all right? Now, see there? You're getting something new down there, aren't you? I think, maybe. <laughs> all right. Green pasture. Green pasture. Because that's the way that God watered it was about by a vapor or mist. And also, it means brevity. His life was going to be short. All right? All right. Now, number 19. Number 19. Give the occupation of each offering that they brought to God. Now, we, we, we studied this a little bit before, too. Now, Cain was a tiller of the ground. All right? His name is Gotten. He's a tiller of the ground. And uh, what did he bring as an offering? Huh? Some kind of fruit from a from the ground. The opposite now, of what now, he was supposed to. The opposite of what he was supposed to do. He was going to do it his way. Man made religion always wants to do it their way. That's just the way it is. Now, just think about this. The ground. Now when when God the curse in Genesis the three the third chapter, when God cursed he cursed the snake. Didn't he? Because he was really the snake got cursed himself. Now he only loaned his body to Lucifer, but he was cursed also because he loaned his body. The animal kingdom evidently has some type or some sort of volition also. I don't understand all about that. There's some things in the Bible that we don't know, and there's not enough evidence in the Bible. It, all I can say is that animals do have a choice. There is a volition in them. I don't know how much, how far this goes, but that collision and that snake, and his name was what in Hebrew? Nahash. Nahash. That means deceiving serpent. That cursed him all the way through the millennium. Look over here. The snake's still going to crawl on his belly. And the curse on the, on the snake was that he would eat his food crawling on his, or walking on his belly is literally what it says. Walking on his belly. Now, that's going to last for quite a while. 
Now, God cursed the woman. He cursed her with a... Uh, she would run after her husband. And she would be cursed in multiple childbirths and multiple pain. A lot of pain. All right. And Adam was cursed in what way? He would have to work harder than he ever did before because the ground was cursed because of him. So the ground is cursed, isn't it? Now, let's go back and look at Cain now. He's a tiller of the ground. And what did he bring as an offering? Fruit from a cursed ground. Fruit from a cursed ground. It's a cursed <laughs> offering is what he brought. Not only that, he brought the wrong amount. It says you didn't divide it correctly. And that's where we get the word tithe all the way back in, even in the, in the garden. It's also that's, something that he grew and, and his brother brought something that God gave. That's right. God gave life to, that, to, to those animals that, that uh, Abel brought. Now, Abel, which means brevity, vanishing vapor, or green pasture. That's what Abel means. Now, he's a keeper of sheep and he brought a what? The firstling, or in other words, a probably what he brought was a firstborn male of his flock. Now, Let's look at number 20 and see what it says. Which offering was accepted? The uh, offering from the cursed ground, a cursed offering of the wrong amount, or Abel's offering? Which one was? The blood sacrifice. The blood sacrifice, because what what did Abel's sacrifice represent? Jesus. It represented, ultimately, the sacrifice that God the Son would make on the cross of Calvary. All right. Let's keep keep on going now. Now number uh, twenty says it was a kind that that offering that Abel brought was a kind that represented the spilled blood or the shed blood of Jesus Christ that was to come. That's what it was supposed to represent. It was a picture of the pre-incarnate Christ when he would become in flesh and die on the cross of Calvary. Number 21. And Cain gotten killed Abel. And it was not just killed him. He was so angry that he did what we call a uh, an overkill. He kept on slashing. After he was dead, he kept stabbing him because he did it in hate. And here we have the first religious persecution in the history of the world. Right here. We have false religion. Yes, Brother Red. How do we know he did with the knife, Jim? That, it, it slayed him. He used the same thing to slay him that they slayed the animals with. Mm. All right? It was it was a knife of some sort. Don't know what, I don't know whether it was an obsidian knife or a, a bronze knife or whatever it was, but whatever they used it to slay, when they would slay a sheep or whatever for an offering, he was slayed by this same type of thing. And not only, it, but it was in the PL stem, which was in, like in perfect tense in Greek. Okay? And what do you do in the imperfect tense? It is, he just kept on killing and kept on stabbing and kept on stabbing him. All right. All right, now, Cain killed Abel, and what curse was placed upon Cain now? Now, let's look at the justice of God. Let's just look at it for a minute. What curse was placed upon Cain? Guilt. What? Guilt. Guilt? Had to leave the garden. Yeah. Well, he was having trouble putting guilt on Cain because Cain was just laying it on somebody else. He, he said, who? He, well, he says, where's your brother? Abel, he says, uh, am I my brother's keeper? Of course we are. He was fighting God come back in God, we'll find a man later on in the lineage that his name means to fight God. Or yes. Wasn't the curse that he was going to serve, he, his descendants were going to serve, should be serving? A no. No. That, 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 the curse, now I, that's didn't. in the book, it says that. Now I, I have to give you just a little bit of background on this book. The Bible in eight ages. Now it throws your curve now and then. And they, that, you know, Southern Baptists, Southern Baptists were uh, uh, in the South during the Civil War, and they believed in slavery. All right, and the Southern Baptists, many of them were in the Ku Klux Klan, 
and all of this stuff, and they and they believed in servants. And they taught for many, many years, and they still teach in some of those churches. My teachers taught this. And they're what we call a, a white power and all this. You know, this is a, this is a deal. Now, this is a, I'm telling you the truth about this. Now, this guy that wrote this book believes that the curse that was placed upon Cain was that they were going to be servants to everybody. But the opposite happened. So we know that wasn't the curse. All right? We're going to see another curse later on. He brings it in also, and he brings it in that. And they believe in segregation. <laughs> and he'll bring that out in the book also. So just be read it with a grain of salt sometimes. Brother Brad. Isn't he cursed to that certain land out there, even to this day? All right. Now, let's, let's, that's, the, that's the, the answer to the question. Cain, the ground which he said, look what I have done. Now, you curse the ground, you curse the ground, because God told Adam, by the sweat of your nostrils, as he's over there digging and killing up all the weeds and stuff, this is when they came. Now, Cain, the ground is going to be double cursed. So, what did Cain do? Just think about it for a while. What did Cain do to overcome that double curse? Remember what he did? His descendants? Made slaves out of they, beca- they originated slavery. They became slave owners because then they didn't have to work, but their slaves would have to work. And that's what they did. Nimrod and all that kind of stuff that's all, you know, all of this, that was slavery also. Let's go on a little bit further. Then it says in verse 22, it says, by the way, that Cain killed Abel and what curse was placed upon him? He was cursed. The ground was double cursed because of him. And he became a fugitive and a vagabond. And he became nomadic. But he, they started the slave trade business. Number 22. A mark was placed upon uh, Cain to keep him from killing, keep uh, people from killing him. And vengeance would be taken seven all fold on anyone who killed him. Alright. Now I don't know what that mark was. <coughs> Neither does anybody else. If you ask these Southerners, they're going to say they were black. Okay? But we don't know what that mark was. We just don't know what it was. It doesn't tell us what it was. But a mark was placed upon him. Okay? It, Whatever the mark was, I don't know. It says in But so they could tell him, they could tell who Cain was, and they weren't supposed to kill him. And I'm sure here was the first murder that took place. What do you think? They think that was front page news? What do you think? Cain killed Abel, his brother. That's, I mean, everybody knew about it. So when they knew, And guess who all of these people were on the earth? They were all relatives. And what was the first thing Cain... Cain was a killer, so what was he worried about? <coughs> Getting killed. And he was the only one ever killed anybody. But he's worried about getting killed, Brother David. You just answered my question. Okay. <laughs> he was a killer. You know, what? When, when, when a thief is robbed, they're really unhappy. <laughs> Aren't they? They're really unhappy. So let's go on and look at this a little bit more. And now we come on down to number 23. Seth was the third son of Adam and Eve. Now, I don't know whether he was the third son or not, to tell you the truth, because they had many children. But Seth was a replacement or his name means that, and it means Substitute. what? Substitute. Substitute or replacement. That's what his name means. Okay. Uh, when the book is a very good book. It's one of the greatest books that I've ever seen written on, on the purpose of God and everything else. But there are places that are a little bit flawed in it. Okay. Because they just make some dogmatic statements sometimes. Now, who was the heir of the priesthood in in Adam's family. Who was the heir? Cain. Cain was the heir. Now, the second born child was Abel. Was Abel ever, ever a threat to Cain at all? No. He was no threat to Cain at all. So he was never a threat to him that way. The only thing about it is Cain, the firstborn, which got, which they thought was the Messiah. Now, I believe what God was allowing to happen here is to show them how terrible their sin was of rebellion. Because the first child they had would, would be a murderer. A murderer is one of the 
capital crimes, isn't it? In the Bible, that's capital. Capital means relating to the head. They they are to be executed. He was. A, this is the first capital crime in the Bible, and they banished, banished him. All right. Seth was the third son, or at least the replacement of Cain as the heir, but Abel as a person. Okay. He became the heir. Cain had disqualified himself from heirship when he murdered his brother. How could be he be the priest if he was a murderer? All right. All right. Two sons of Adam and Eve began two lines of people which composed the only races of their time. They were known as the Zethites and the Cainites. All right. The Zethites and the Cainites. Now, through the line of Zeth, through the line of Zeth, this is what we call the faith line, okay? And they're sometimes referred to as the faithful and the evil lines. Now, the descendants of Zeth are also referred to as the sons of God. Now, there are two different views of Genesis 6 chapter. Let's go there. Now, he's taken one view. And it used to be the view that I just absolutely tenaciously and dogmatically held on to. I've learned a lot of things since then. I keep, I keep learning. I became a student. I earned two doctorates. And all I did was learn how to learn. That's all. Now, if you go to seminary or go to college, and that's all you ever learn, you're nothing but a cesspool. Now, Dr. John... It takes a lot to get a doctor, doesn't it? Do you have to keep taking refresher courses all the time? You go Always back. learning. Always learning. You have to keep on learning. All right? Well, I've tried to do that. Genesis 6 and 1. Let's have some... Are you, are in, are you in Genesis 6 and 1? Young man, have you got that? Genesis 6 and 1? Did you read that for us? When men began to increase the number on the earth and daughters were born to them, the sons of God saw that the daughters of, of the men were beautiful and they married any of, any of them they chose. Now, I'm going to tell you something one time. I, uh, I had a surprise birthday party. Some of you are at that surprise birthday party. It was such a surprise to me, I didn't know it was my birthday party. Mm -hmm. It was over with. <laughs> <laughs> I mean it. <laughs> Dr. Susan Hughes. Brother, were you there at that party? No, no. How many of you were there at that party? I, I know some of you were. All right. I walked into that house, and I'm so bashful. Really, I am. I went to the end. Way out there, and here's Roger and Phil there, and they're all up. All, I said, what's up doing at my... They told me it was my Sunday school party. Almost didn't go. <laughs> 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 because I am really bad. Well, I come up here, and all these people are in here like this, and so I go over there and get over there in the corner of the kitchen, I sat down over there, and Dr. Susan says, Dr. Phillips, no. Come in here and sit at the head of the table in the dining room. And Brother Bill, the little mean boy over here, <laughs> the bad boy, <laughs> takes the bad boy. <laughs> He's always giving me a lot of PR. So there's another doctor there in the house, Dr. Minson. Do you remember that? Mm -hmm. And B Brother Bill says to this doctor, he said, there is no question that you can answer, ask him in the Bible that he can't answer. <laughs> That's what he said. Isn't that right, Bill? Did you say that? You answered it. <laughs> well, I didn't answer it either. I skirted around it because I didn't want to answer it. He, speak, he looks up at me and he says, Who is B'nai Elohim? Like that. And I just said, Well, I'll tell you who Elohim is. That's the triune God, the creator of all the heavens and the earth. And I didn't tell him anything about B'nai Elohim. I didn't want to discuss it at that moment. Then later on, he invites me out for lunch. He said, I have a lot more things I'm going to talk to you about. And he came to the class a lot. He still comes in here every now and then. And uh, he's a doctor. He works in emergency medicine at the Heart Hospital and everything. He came to this class for a long time. Before. He was in the class. He still comes when he can. He works a lot. And he's just about getting off enough time to go to church, and that's about all right now. Anyway, he, he, we were over there at the, uh, the Double Tree. I sat down there, and he sits down right by me. Right on my left side where I could hear. Say, I only hear on my left ear. So he sits down on the left side so he, he knows I can hear him. And he said, what about this Benay Elohim business? 
And I said, well, I didn't want to ask you that question. I said, it's talking about the sons of God. He said, yeah. <laughs> I like that. And I said, well, I don't know about it all about it. I know about it. I just tell you this. <clears throat> now, that there were sons of God saw the daughters of men were beautiful and they took wives of themselves whoever they chose. And the Lord said, my spirit shall not always strive with man for her because he is also flesh and nevertheless his day shall be 120 years. Now what was that prophecy of? Was man supposed to live 120 years? A lot of people say that. Is that what it's talking about? Until Noah. What? Until Noah. Noah was, would, how long would Noah build the ark? 120 years. They said, I'm going to give him 120 years to repent. Now there are two different opinions of this. And the one opinion uh, Dr. L.D. Foreman gives you in the book. And he tells you that these were not angels. Now, how many of you have heard of the book of Enoch? How many of you ever heard any of the rabbinical writings? These are the old the rabbis in the Old Testament. All of the rabbis say one thing. And the book of Enoch says one thing. He names the angels. As a matter of fact, Enoch, if you read the book of Enoch, he names the angels that did this. He gives their name. All right? Now, <clears throat> of these two opinions... I don't know which one of these is right. But as I get older and as I study more, I think more that maybe it was the angels instead of the faith line that we're talking about. Brother Bill. Yeah, my, I, you know, my mind works. I've been doing some thinking on yeah, that. I don't get that when you got me off on it. Uh -huh. And the thing that keeps coming to my mind when I look at the two theories that makes me lean towards the two that separated Seth and his line and, and rather than the angels was this. When Jesus said, when you die, you will be like the angels. You will be never, neither given in marriage. The or, angels in heaven weren't they? Yeah. Well, those will, are the ones that remained in heaven. heaven. Yeah, there will be no marriage in heaven. Yeah. So that tells me... Those that angels obey marriage. God, so there is no marriage in heaven. Yeah, they don't reproduce. But the other ones didn't obey God. Yeah. All right, they didn't obey God. Okay. There we have, and I used that for a lot of time. And Tony and Hernando, didn't I used to teach that? Dogmatically, I taught that. It also makes reference in Jude 6 and 7. Today. Yeah. Jude 6 and 7. What's Jude 6 and 7 say, brother? It says, And the angels which kept not themselves clean, but left their own administration, he hath reserved in everlasting chains under gloom unto the judgment of the great day. Okay, now let's go to verse 4. Young man, you still there in verse 4? Genesis 6 and verse 4? What does sex, Genesis 6 and verse 4 say? The uh, Nephilim? The Nephilim? Nephilim? Yeah. Were on the earth in those days and also afterward. When the sons of God went to the daughters of men and had children by them, they were the heroes of old men of renown. Alright, they were famous men. They were great people. The book of Enoch says they were gigantic people. Now, at, during this period of time, Enoch, and I don't know, I know that the book of Enoch is inspired of God, but how much of it, I don't know. We have never had anybody go down and, and really check the book of Enoch like they have the rest of the Bible, because the book of Enoch was lost for a long time. The early church writers wrote about the book of Enoch, but it was lost. Now, it is the most copied book in the Dead Sea Scrolls. <coughs> that is a book that's copied more than any other book is the book of Enoch. Yeah. Jim, my study Bible says that another interpretation of that is that the sons of God were the descendants of Seth and the daughters of men were the descendants of Cain yes. who married amongst each other which created the sin. Yeah. Now that's that's what L.D. Warren was talking about. Marrying the yeah, the godly man marrying un, uh, ungodly men wearing, marrying godly daughters or whatever. You know, and then they mingle together. But there's a problem with that. What is a Nephilim? What are they? What is a Nephilim? Nephilim are called fallen ones. In Jude, what does it say there? <coughs> it says uh, in, in verse six. Yeah, in Jude. Yeah, it says in the angels which which uh, kept. Uh, not themselves clean, but left their own administration. He hath reserved in everlasting chains under gloom under the judgment of the great day. All right. Now, there's two theories. I'm going to give them both to you. You just, whichever one suits you, you can have it. <laughs> 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 All 
All right. One of them is, and it's in the book, and it's in your study guide, that these were the, the daughters of men and the sons of God and the daughters of men. And the sons of God married ungodly women, and they were messed up. The other theory is that the rabbis, the book of Enoch, and all of the old writings, quote, there's more evidence for that than there is the other, to tell you the truth. There's more evidence to support that these were angels marrying with, or uh, cohabiting with women than there is that they were the, the, the line, two lines. And I, like I said, I used to believe that. And I'm, I'm not still not sure that I, it's not right, but at least I have to show you the other evidence. Okay? The other evidence. Now, <clears throat> What happened right after this? What took place right after this? 120 years later, what happened? God killed God killed every human being on the earth except for Noah's descendants because he was found what? Pure. Right. His descendants. Now this is what Enoch says and this is what the rabbis say. You take the rabbinical writings they're going to tell you what I'm telling you right now. Every one of those people were killed. Now when they came in the, in, the, in the land of Canaan, the Philistines there, there was one great big dude. And what did God tell Israel to do when they went in the land? Kill every man, woman, and child. And all of their animals. The highest something. Clean house. Totally. Clean house. Because maybe it was contaminated again after that period of time. And how many of you saw the, the, the movie by Chuck Messler called The, the, uh, the Nephilim? Mm -hmm. Well, how many of you have seen it? I showed it in this class one time. Okay. If you want to see that movie, I'll show it to you again. But, but some of you have seen that movie. It's interesting. Because Chuck Messler goes into the rabbi, rabbinical writings and all that stuff and uh, he even equates, in the last days, he equates the flying saucers. You know, I knew a guy very very close. His name was Bill Moore. He was a movie star, and, uh, and he did a lot of stuff. If you go out there to Taft, he was, he's a narrator at the Taft Museum of the, uh, all the Taft oil fields, all the auto days and all that stuff. But he would also work for the Air Force. He was the person that they put under to take pictures of flying saucers. And he took some pictures of them. They, you know, he said they're real. He doesn't believe. He thinks it's something the United States has, secret weapon or something. That's what he came up with, because he didn't believe in God or anything, right? Demons or anything like that. <coughs> Chuck Messer says he thinks it is demonic materialization. All of this stuff. I mean, the de demons can do a lot of things, don't they? We have people in seances. That quote, something happened 700 years ago. Now, demons, they aren't, they aren't like we are. We live in one age in time, don't we? We live in our lifetime. These demons, that these spirits, have been alive ever since God created them before He created the earth. So they can quote anybody or whatever, anybody's ever lived, and tell you what happened. People that do these crime searches and things like that, you have to be real careful with that because I believe a lot of that is demonic. It is spiritual. All right. Well, anyway, in 120 years, all of them were killed. I thought I'd throw that one in there for good measure. Okay. Dogmatically, L.D. Foreman says that these are just two races of man, the wicked race and the, and the good race, the ones that, the, the Zephites and the Canaanites. All right. Now let's go down to number uh, 24. Cain dwelt in the land of what? God. Nod. What does nod mean? What does nod mean? How many of you know? Oh, I know you guys know. Marilyn knows it. What does the word nod mean in Hebrew? Brother Mike, you remember that? You don't? Nod means wandering. That's what it means. The land of wandering. Okay? Cain dwelt in the land of wandering and knew his wife. Now, where did he... Now, one of the questions that people always ask, where did Cain get his wife? Have you ever heard that question? Have you ever asked that question? Where did Cain get his wife? Where did he get his wife? 
Is he the one of his sisters or one of his what? Cousins? <laughs> Aunts? Uncles? Whatever. I mean, whatever. You know, I mean, they they're Eve could have had a thousand children. Okay, she could have had a thousand children. Check on my. I got to do something here real quick. Enoch. Enoch. Alright. 
And then we have Methuselah, M-E-T-H-U-L-R-S-E-L-A-H, and then H is Lamech, L-A-M-E-C-H, and then we have Noah. He lived for 777 years. Yeah. All right, Lamech. Yeah, Lamech. And then we have Noah. Noah. N O A H. And then we have Sham. Is J. Now let's go over to Cain. Cain's line. Just pick one. Cain. Cain's line. The first one is Cain. One? What? That's over over across. It says there's a Zeph line. It says Zeph here, and then Cain over here on this on this side. Okay, Zeph and Cain, the two different lines. Now there's one, two, three, or A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, and then on the other one we start with the A. It's Cain. Cain. All right. Uh, Cain means what? Let's compare these. Cain means God. All right, go over to Zeth. What does Zeth mean? Substitute. Oh, now we have Enoch. Enoch means teacher. That was Cain's first son. Back over to Enoch. Enoch means dying or short-lived. Then go back down to Canaan. Canaan means purchaser or redeemer. All right. And then go back over to the next one over there, down below Enoch, is what? Irad. Irad. And that means city of witness. Just look and see what they're saying here. Look and see what these names mean now. Alright? And then we have Mahalel. That means the splendor of God. The splendor of God. And by the way, the first ten names in the faith line predict the coming of the Messiah and what he would do. And then these other seven names over here, they talk about the battle. Now, Mahajel means God is fighting or God is being fought. God is in conflict. Jared means poured out or to descend. Methushael means man of the dark, a murderer. All right, Enoch. Of course, in the faith line, it means teacher, and, and he was the one that was raptured and taken up to God. He did not see death. All right? And all of these, by the way, Zeth lived 912 <laughs> years, and uh, Enosh 905, Canaan 910, Mahalel 900 and, or 895, Jared 962 years, and Enoch 365 years, and he was gone. And then we have Methuselah, and he lived 969 years, Methuselah. And then Lamech, how many years? 777. And Noah, 950 years. And Shem, about 600 years. Now Cain. Then we have, in Cain's line, we have Cain, Gotten, we have Enoch, Teacher, uh, Iraq, City of Witness, and Mahayel, God is fighting or God is combating. And then Methuselah, man of the dark or murderer. And then his son is called Lamech. And let's go to Genesis, the fourth chapter, and let's look a little bit about Lamech and see what this guy did. All right? Genesis chapter 4. Genesis, the fourth chapter. What does the book of Genesis, what does Genesis mean? Beginnings. Beginnings. All right, means beginning. Let's go over here. And about verse nine, four and verse. Uh, well, let's go up. Let's go and just get the whole bunch of guys in here. Four and verse sixteen. Who's got that? Four sixteen. <coughs> Brother David. And Cain went out from the presence of the Lord and dwelt in the land of Nod. Okay, the land of what? Come on, guys, wandering. All right, east of Eden. All right, in the east, east of where Eden was, the garden. Okay, and uh, number seventeen. And Cain knew his wife, and she conceived and bare Enoch, and he built a city 
and he called the name of the city after the name of his son Enoch. All right, so he's and this is teacher. What do you think you're teaching over there? All right, now brother Randall, are you right there also? Number eighteen. Now, if Enoch was born Irad, and Irad became father of Methusel, and Methusel became the father of Methusel, and Methusel became the father of Lamech. Now, let's look at Lamech here. Now, what does Lamech start doing? Are you there, Robert? All right. What does not that nineteen? What does Lamech do? Lamech married two women. All right, <laughs> brother Bill. Did you say you took one of your minds, or what was that a while ago earlier? Which one is one? Some guys just don't learn. <laughs> <laughs> this is the first bigamist in the Bible. He's a polygamist. All right. All right. Not only is he a polygamist, what else does he do here? Let's find out about this, brother Robert. One named Ada and the other Zila. Uh huh. Ada gave birth to Jabal. Okay. He was the father of those who lived in tents and raised livestock. All right. His he, brother. He was nomadic then, wasn't he? And he raised livestock. His brother's name was Jubal. He was the father of all who played the harp and flute. Okay, he's a musician. Now here we have, in this group, we 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 have blacksmiths. We have people of great. Uh, invention. And they're starting to play music and all kinds of stuff. Here. I don't think it's godly music that they're playing. Alright. Uh, rock and roll stars. <laughs> Number 22. Zila also had a son, Tubal King, who forged all kinds of tools out of bronze and iron. Tubal King's sister was Naama, 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 Lamech said to his wives, Ada and Zila, listen to me, wives of Lamech. Now he was singing a song, this is a ballad that he's singing for her. This is a ballad, and it's a boasting ballad that he's singing to her. Here's the first uh, cowboy ballad, I guess. <laughs> wives of Lamech, hear my words, I have killed a man for wounding me, a young man for injuring me. He has, he has murdered. Not only has he taken more than one wife, but he is a murderer. And he's boasting about it. Now, I, let, let's, let's stop right there. Okay. Now, first of all, before the flood, before the flood, men were not given animals to eat, were they? And the book of Enoch says that they began to eat animals and to drink their blood and, and all of this stuff. And God had told them not to do this. The animals were their companions, <coughs> not their food. He says uh, that these people began to kill animals and eat animals, and they began to hunt, and they were mighty hunters, the men of the dark. He was a killer and a hunter. All right? That's what he was. He was a killer and a hunter. And then he said, I have killed a man. Not only were they starting to kill people or animals, but they started killing men. And the book of Enoch says that they were eating people. They were cannibals. Now, I don't know whether all of that's true in the book of Enoch, but I'm just telling you. If Cain is avenged sevenfold, Lamech shall be seventy-sevenfold. Boy, now let's look, go look at what these names mean over here under the Cain's line. Look at it again. Mahajel, that means that uh, God is fighting or God is in conflict. Methuselah, man of the dark, the hunter, the killer. Lamech, Begins to what? What does he do? Destroyer. He's a destroyer. He's a destroyer. Just look at that. Lamech over here is the king of kings and lord of lords. That's what Lamech means. In the faith line we have Lamech, which is king of kings and lord of lords. And who's that talking about? Who's that describing in the future? But who? who? God. Jesus is going to be king of kings and lord of lords, isn't it? All right? But who is going to be... Well, Lamech was a destroyer. But Lamech was a destroyer. He was a killer. But remember that, that what God does, when God does something, the devil duplicates it or imitates it, doesn't he? All right? He, he, 
imitates it so that they have godly names in their life. But now, during the tribulation period, who is going to be king of kings and lord of lords? For a short while. Who? The Antichrist. Isn't he? Just think about that for a while. Think about these different contrasts. Jabel. Jabel. What does Jabel mean? Moving. Constantly moving. <coughs> Look at what he what so what it says about Jabel. Over here. What about Jabel? What did Jabel do? Anna gave birth to Jabel, and he was the father of those who moved a lot. He was wanderer. He was a uh, nomad. Okay? And tense and had livestock. So he, his name means move, mover. Someone that's moving. And then how about Jubal? What does Jubal mean? Anybody you know what the Jubal means? Jubal means flowing. Flowing. Alright? Flowing. And then how about Tubal Cain? Alright? Jubal Cain. Alright? What does that mean? Tool maker. Well, he was a blacksmith, wasn't he? Alright? They were blacksmiths, they were doing... But it means flowing from Cain is what it means. Flowing from Cain. Flowing from Cain. And then the last one is Naaman. Naaman is a pretty name. It means pleasant or lovely. Someone easy to get along with. And she was a girl descendant. Alright? Just think about that for a while. This was a girl descendant now. And now I turn my page over. Are you on the next page? Does yours on page what? 25. 25. All right. All right. 25. Do you have any questions so far? Any questions? Got any questions? <coughs> so far, do you have any questions? Do you have questions, young lady? No, I don't. Yeah. Are you, have you learned anything? Yes. Yeah. All right. Number 26. About In about six or seven generations, what important description is given of the daughters of men? They were fair. They were beautiful. All right? Number 27. Number 27. Beautiful girl. <clears throat> the book of Enoch will tell you, if it's correct, that this is when women began to use makeup. <laughs> And he told us which angel invented the makeup and the eye paint and the, uh, and the eye shadow and all this stuff. Now this is, remember that this book goes back, as far as we know, this, goes, this book goes back to 300 and something B.C. before Christ. And this is what the rabbis, they taught all these years. Alright? Now number 27, Methuselah was the oldest recorded man and his death is about what? How old was he? That's it. 969 years is also marked what important Bible event? The flood. What does Methuselah mean? When he is dead, it shall come to pass. Now, who preached for 300 years before Noah? Enoch. Where do we have evidence of that? In the book of Jude. Quote, said that he preached. And what did he preach? He preached the coming judgment that God was going to destroy the earth by a flood and he even talked about the second coming of the Lord. It just jumped past the first. Well, he tells us about the son of, of, of woman, which is the Messiah. All right, 969 years and in the very year that Methuselah died, the flood became. What's his name? What's his name? Methuselah. When he's dead, it shall come to pass. The word dart or killing is in that word, Methuselah. Remember we had the word over there in the other yes. one, in that dart, killing. He's going to die in that year. The year that he dies, it shall come to pass. In that year, the flood came. It was a prophecy. Now, who was his father? Enoch. Huh? Who named him? Enoch. Enoch. Who was the one that was preaching the, the, the coming judgment? Enoch. And so he named his child when he's dead it shall come to pass. What would come to pass? The judgment. Alright. Now 
do you understand all this? Is it starting to be a little clearer to you? Now, I didn't mean to confuse you with the two different theories of the lines of the Son of Man and, and of angels. I just want you to have information. Now, you're going to have to work that out yourself. <laughs> because I, I don't have much of a sister and Dino. What is your position? What did you believe? Like I said, there is more evidence that they were angels than that they were the, the, the sons of God, the, the faith line and the other. There is more evidence on that side than there is on the other. But it could be... I don't know. There is more historical evidence and even written evidence that these were angels that came down and, and left the state of God and, and cohabited with women and brought on a monstrosity of a race on this earth. Because we have duplications. We have, we have God doing something and Satan imitating him, don't we? So it would work right into that if that's what happened. I'm not saying that's what happened, but it could have. All right? You know when we see... When we see Noah, we can ask him. <laughs> and Enoch. All right? And we'll know for sure. All right. Number 28 says, Give reasons why the sons of God does not refer to angels. And we've already discussed that. The word giant, which means fallen ones, is what it literally means. And then number 30, to Give description of the time just before the flood. They ate, drank, and they married wives and were given in marriage. And uh, they were just going on. The idea is that... Is that you know what? Drinking and eating and getting married is not a sin. It really isn't. Drinking and eating, I mean, today at lunchtime, you're going to drink and eat, aren't you? And I'm not talking about booze, but I'm talking about drinking and eating. And you're going to talk about somebody going to get married in your life somewhere. One of your relatives is getting married somewhere. And that's what we do. What it means is that they went on with their everyday life just absolutely... Ignoring the judgment that was coming. They ignored the judgment. And that's what people do today. We ought to be very interested. We live in the lap link between the old church age and what's going to come as a tribulation period. We're right there in the middle of that. We, we are at one of the most exciting periods of time in history. And we're eating, drinking, and getting married, and giving in marriage. Well, we ought to be thinking about the Lord. All right. Thank you for your uh, your, your attention. We're going to start on on the uh, Noah and the Ark. And Brother David, you're going to be our prayer guy. And remember, those that weren't here earlier, we're planning on having a dinner at my house on Gosford Road. We got to have these little maps if you want to come out there next Saturday at 12:30. We'll be looking forward to having you there. I'll get a hold of you.